Oh, hey there guys. So I'm here at Hy-Vee. I know it's kind of an odd way to begin the video. Sometimes people wonder why I'm always, you know, recording late at night. I've been going through a whole bunch of insomnia. I've been having moments where I feel like I need to be out and about doing something or um, I went through this sort of thing whenever I worked at the bar and I, and I had to work really late and then I would just stay up until the wee hours in the morning. When I was working at the museum, same sort of thing. I was getting off work really early in the morning and not going to bed until two, you know, two to five in the, in the morning sometimes. And then after that, I'm gonna go back home and work on the rest of this video. Never a quiet night. Well, that was a little bit more eventful. All right, welcome back guys. I am Mario the Artisan Rogue. I've been using one of those ergonomic mouses, uh, ergonomic mice. And uh, it's been it's been rather cool. I didn't like it at first because you know your hands it's like this as opposed to this way, and but my carpal tunnel was really bad. And I had an, that incident that I think I'd spoken about this a little while back, where I injured my hand and it's still not healed. It's it's pretty painful. Um, in fact, when I <laughs> when I shook hands with my vet, thanking him very much for saving my cat's life, you know he's he's got a firm grip and I have a very weak hand now. And he gripped it this way, which even right now kind of hurts. Um, the knuckle is definitely busted. It's broken. And there's something wrong through here. And I'm not sure what it is. Enough of my chit-chat. I, sometimes I think I bore everybody with that stuff. So, Oh, thank you, Photoshop. I know what the brush tool does. All right. So let me see here. Um, what else is going on? You know what? This, this whole week has been really... Crazy cuckoo. Okay, I have no idea what this is gonna be. I'm just gonna start here. Uh, I think I kind of drew like a little bit of a weird T-Rex here. So, <laughs> I have been seeing more and more stuff about dinosaurs. You know what, that's what this is just gonna become. It's just a little dinosaur right there. Some sort of dinosaur, I'm not really sure what he's gonna become. Let me see here. <laughs> All right. I have. Uh, I've also been watching how some people have been like online dealing with, you know, uh, you know everything that's going on right now. And I I know for a fact that like I'm not doing very well as far as dealing with stuff. I have been trying my damnedest to stay positive, stay all these other things, and uh, it's not been. Um, it's not been successful, I'll tell you that. Not at least not for my part, because every single time I thought, "Oh, okay, you know, I've kind of, I've kind of got a control on this, or I, I know what I'm doing." Nope, not even remotely. And thank goodness, I mean, some I, I've reached out to a few artists I knew that I thought, "Oh, hey, you know, you know they, they've they've definitely got their stuff together." And how's that working for you? Nope. And by the way, I'm not going. This is not going to be paleontologically correct. I understand that I'm doing a very stylized dragon dra dinosaur. Look how freaking tired I am. That calls for more of a drink. There's no liquor in this. It's just a soda. Has no aspartame. Or maybe it does. Is it aspartame? Aspartame? Uh, you know what? Let's talk about that. <laughs> so for some of you, you know that I do a second show where it's, I, I do, I, I am the co-host of, uh, a Phil Maki buddy of mine, and we do this show that we really don't know what it's about, but we end up dis we end up discussing and describing a lot of things that have to do with. Um, the, the, in fact, this last one was about artistic integrity. It was probably one of my favorite ones because we had really started to dive into it. We really start kind of rolling about thirty minutes into it or so is when we really start hitting uh, the 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 good meat of it, and um, it's it's a lot of play around and that sort of thing. But I, I really I really think that that one was one that I was like, wow, that one that one really hit the you know the hit the scales right. 
See, that's how easy it is for me to lose my, my train of thought. I'm already like, because mm, it's, it's late at night. I've always wondered, like, what that was like whenever people first saw dinosaurs and decided to draw them. What was what was the you know impetus for it? You know, did they? I know that they based from what I understand, they based a lot of what they thought dinosaurs looked like, you know, off of creatures that lived at that point in time, and they thought, oh well, they had them slow plotting creatures. They couldn't possibly be crazy, fast, you know, or or dangerous things. They couldn't they couldn't be that. For some reason, he's starting to look like he's wearing a bit of a spacesuit. So. What, a T-Rex has what, three fingers? No, they have two. They have two little graspy fingers. So how would that work? Like, let's say he's holding... So if he has like a little ray gun, right? So we'll give him a little sci-fi ray gun here. <laughs> this is making me chuckle. All right. So he's got a little, little sci-fi gun there. Make it. Yeah. I don't think there's enough. Uh, there's no way for him to really palm that thing, though, is there? Not really. Because they, I think they really do just have that. So we'll uh, put big gloves on him there. Okay, so is, it, so is he officially becoming a little. Yeah, let's, you know what? Let's put some little spacey shoulders on him <laughs> this is pretty freaking funny so sometimes um, it, going back to what I was saying about you know dinosaurs and thinking about like how people thought of them back then I always wondered like what you know what I, I know there's probably a book out there that talks about that sort of thing I heard a really cool uh, audio book which I know some people think that's cheating to listen to an audio book, but hey, it was a long road trip. And uh, it was, I gotta remember what it is. I, you know, when you, when you hear something on a road trip, you're just like, oh, that's awesome. And I don't even remember the name of it, but it had to do with the fossil wars, which I knew something about growing up. And, um, and, and now that I'm older, it's like, it's one of those things where it's kind of like the loss of the Library of Alexandria. You're like, oh God, what was there? Why, why will I never know that knowledge? And I know some people are like, really, dude? That was like a long time ago. Yeah, I understand that. Knowledge is knowledge, man. You just you can't replace that stuff. Once that record's gone, it's gone. No time travel yet. And um, But in there, they talk about these bone wars where essentially paleontologists were racing to try and discover new dinosaurs. And sometimes if they couldn't extract or, you know, lay claim to these bones, they'd blow them up. I mean, how many specimens, how many perfect or really good specimens that we end up losing? How many specimens we didn't even know about species just in general are now lost because of egotism and two guys, you know, fighting back and forth, trying to outdo each other. I mean, honestly, that sort of thing, you know, manifests in other parts of um, archaeology and stuff like that as well, too. It's not just it's not just something like in paleontology. Which was bad enough as it was, but um, boy, I'm off tonight. I'm not even drawing a really good circle, am I? You know what? That this would be inherently stupid for the. <laughs> it was really a cosmonaut. This would be ridiculous. The the glass bowl that would have to be on a dinosaur's head for this to work. All right. So let me see here. We're gonna let's give him some little knee pads here. I don't even know if that's really where his knees would be. Give him that. We'll, uh, we'll make the art. Really? You were in the window? I can't even get mad at my cats right now because of Luna. Like, I'm, like, so happy she's home. I'm like, sure, you guys can do what you want right now. <laughs> That's pretty freaking terrible. They do what they want anyway. I, 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 I try not to say anything because, like, honestly, they're not destructive cats. I, Out of all of the cats I've ever owned in my life, I've only ever owned four. And, uh, well, I, I also technically count my, my, my parents' cats as well, too. But of my cats, the ones that I had the longest, uh, Luna and Radar that I have right now, and then my cat who passed away a few years ago, Zero, um, they weren't destructive cats. They were as cat as you want to get. <laughs> That's a weird way to say that. But 
they were definitely um they were definitely the kind of cats that you know you you had a you, i always wondered i'm like man you guys don't you guys don't really act like you know what i i would have assumed cats would have acted like and they were they were really pretty different all of them um and these two certainly are they're not they're not they they sometimes do tear some stuff up and things like that sure they're like cats that will scratch some stuff up but um luna was one that was living in a bush and you know that the whole thing was like well can't leave the cat alone got to bring that cat in and she had no claws so because I, I don't believe in decline screw that but um and radar has his claws but neither one of them are really destructive they like to mess with things that they'll, they'll sometimes jack some stuff up but they aren't um they aren't really destructive the worst that happens is i have to end up refinishing and repainting the drywall areas because of the claws or like um, i've darn near had my flash gordon album fall off the wall a couple times i'm actually going to stick those suckers on there because i'm not going to be able to prevent the cats from jumping up in the windowsills here in the studio so that's that's just not happening this is actually coming along pretty good but see now this has become so whimsical that i'm like what do I do with this head because like this just isn't working for me now like I kind of want to do something different because I'm like nah let's do something else here let's see here what would you know it's <laughs> I, I stray away from doing really cartoony things sometimes because I feel like I, I want to do something somewhat serious but at the same time you know um, there's something to be said about doing kind of you know funny and goofy uh stuff okay so maybe maybe he's got maybe he's got some bigger teeth coming out of here on the lips and that sort of thing and um maybe, you know maybe he doesn't even have to be a t-rex so we'll give him a little bit of a thing here a little bit of a harsh eyebrow that and maybe since he's not a t-rex um well we'll do the old cheesy thing like well we'll pretend that underneath his suit like these little dorsal uh spikes would have folded down or something like that so we won't worry about that too much um so that's always so weird I, you know it's it's a uh, I the last time I really drew a dinosaur I had this idea for one when I there's a I, I think I've talked about this before there was a children's book that I had released in limited run a few of you may have it still but it was based on the incredible edible what was it the incredible the indelible incredible edible adventures of the pooch patrol and that was based around three dogs that I owned some years back and it was violet daisy and bonnie and they had two beagles and a little rat terrier chihuahua and the entire thing was just a very simple very gentle set of stories that revolved around them growing up and living as an adopted family you know as it didn't have any focus on human elements or anything else like that it was it, it was very much just through their eyes so it was a little bit of toy story a little bit of of a garfield-esque sort of thing but they were still very much dogs. They didn't have um, a lot of anthropomorphic aspects to them, aside from the fact that you could understand what they were saying, what they were doing to some degree. And I, I struggled with that for a long time because you know how whenever, I don't know if you guys have ever gone through this, but sometimes I'll, I'll design or develop something where I'm like, oh yeah, this is going to work. And then you end up finding kind of the chinks in the armor on your concept when you're halfway through, you're like, oh, this isn't as, uh, this isn't as good of an idea as I thought it was going to be. And sometimes that's that, well for me that's definitely a frustrating thing i'm like man that's it's not at all what i wanted that to be Let's see here we'll give him some pouches not too many pouches i'm not i'm not rob liefeld for those of you that don't know who rob liefeld is i'm about to tell you some stuff here i personally don't really like uh rob liefeld as a creator Rob Liefeld is a guy that in the 90s, he was kind of the young hotshot that was that came off of uh, either Marvel or DC. I don't know. I, I never followed his career. 
Um, and he was involved with Image Comics, and he joined Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, Jay Lee, um, Sam Keith, a bunch of people that that went and formed Image Comics, and they did their thing. And he was like in a jeans commercial, to, you know, directed by Spike Lee, this uh, Rob Liefeld character guy, and a, really a character, and uh, you know all this other sort of thing with him being sort of a, a kind of a, a famous. You know, they were kind of rock stars at the time. You know, it was like all this extreme stuff. That's back in the 90s when everything, you know, started with an X and ended with a Z. And, uh, you know, that was just marketing 101 at that point in time. And what really got me was the fact that uh, they, um, they, they, you know, the books, <laughs> I remember somebody telling me years later, you know, these things are never going to be worth what they are. Because this was back in the day whenever comics had like multiple gatefold holographic die cut you know embossed sort of like collector covers and like you'd get multiple something like hey if you order a hundred of our books you're going to get one hollow foil you know gold foil um hand signed version of this comic it was insane what was going on back then and a lot of those things now you can find them for next to nothing i mean there's a few that are still pretty hard to find for a while I don't know if I still have them or not. I did have the entire Spawn run from issue one through, I think, 30. And I think no issue four was the one that was hardest to find. Something like that. It was really weird. I don't remember if it was like a, there was like some sort of mail-in premium or something that went along with it. I, I don't really remember. But, you know, I, I, I'm not even sure why I'm talking about this. Aside. Oh, Rob Liefeld. Okay. Not even sure why I'm talking about Rob Liefeld, except for the fact... Oh, the pouches! That's why, now that I'm looking at my artwork, I'm like, oh, the pouches! So he's known for that. Like, somebody actually made a character named The Pouch. Which was freaking hilarious. This is a picture of him right here. I, I don't know who this artist is. I gotta look this up. But he's somebody that... It, at first, I was like, everybody I knew was obsessed with him, uh, Liefeld, because he was so young. He was essentially the epitome of the dream. Of everybody trying to be into comics, right? You're going to make it, you're going to be big, and you're going to make money. And he did. I mean, and he's probably still making some money to some degree since he's the co-creator of, uh, of Deadpool, you know, who's seeing a giant resurgence of popularity because of the Ryan Reynolds version of him. He's always been a popular character. If you don't believe me, go to a man major comic book convention. You will see just as many versions of Deadpool as you will Harley Quinn. It's just what happens. There's no, you know, right right behind that would be Stormtroopers. Although I I don't really hate that I see that many Stormtroopers. Um and I really I don't have a problem with Deadpool. I really love the fact that Ryan Reynolds has really taken that character and made it his own. I don't I couldn't see anyone else portraying that character. There's a certain manic energy to that that really is you know amazing and ryan reynolds does an amazing job with it but there was something about uh rob liefeld growing up it for me you know the whole the whole thing was i i remember back then thinking i don't know why this guy's such a big deal and to this day there's still there's still people that when i bring up that i don't like rob liefeld or there's certain there's certain creators that i i'm not fond of their work i you know, it isn't necessarily that I've met them personally and I don't like them. I mean, there's there's some that I I know that I've met personally that I'm like, yeah, I don't, really don't like this person. There are times whenever I feel like, okay, you know, I don't I, I don't want to jump on the same bandwagon. And I remember asking a few people sometimes, like, well, what what is it about Rob Liefeld you like? You know, and a lot of them would say, oh, well, he's a really great artist and this sort of thing. He's not a terrible artist. He's not a fantastic artist from, and I mean that because I look up to people like, you know, Brahm and, uh, geez, you know, like Greg Manchester and all of these other people that are uh, these incredible creators and, and, uh, draftsmen and all these other sorts of things, you know, uh, and going back a little further, you know, one of my earliest influences is Norman Rockwell. So when you see that sort of thing, people that utilize, you know, incredible draftsmanship draftsmanship skills and being able to draw things out of their mind and and rough out things but then also be able to go back and use photography and and knowledge of anatomy to be able to create really good pieces then i want to look at something like what 
some of the work that Rob Liefeld does. And if you Google it, there's like the 20 worst Rob Liefeld drawings out there and then another 20 worst ones. And I think most of the lists are still pretty complete. Most of the images are there. And you can look at it. There's, you know, famous things like his version of Captain America, which physically could not exist. Even how he draws women. I, I agree. I don't, like they say in the list, I don't believe he's ever actually looked at a woman because they don't have spines and their waists are literally half the size of their thighs that that just physically cannot happen and so I, there's a certain point where you know somebody will argue well that's just a stylistic choice okay that's fine i can agree with that and i'm not jumping on the bandwagon of well he's you know he's representing women in a lot in a bad way yeah he kind of is but he's not the only one that's that's actually a, a wider thing in comics that i'm not really down with there's this and it, and it kind of goes both ways, but it is absolutely nailed down on women on that. There's a hypersexualization that, you know, it's weird. Um, I'm going to take a moment here just to get on the soapbox for just a second. Nothing too extreme. I grew up, you know, reading a lot of different things and, and looking at a lot of different comics. And it never really dawned on me how, you know, how prevalent that sort of thing was. Not until I remember picking up my very first issue of Heavy Metal Magazine. And there's the character in there, Druna. I'm not going to put up a picture of her right now, but the the artists that you know work in heavy metal are some of the best in the in the industry. Seriously, like you're not going to find anybody really better than a lot of those people. And these are lifelong illustrators and writers and creators. They are stunning. They're like Boris Vallejo sort of level people. And because of that, there's a bit in there where I look at it and go, well, this is art, right? This is this sort of thing. But then I look at something like what Rob Liefeld might do and go, this isn't really art. Or it is art, but it's nothing that I can appreciate because this seems like it's bombastic, it's over the top, and it's ridiculous in a different way than the high fantasy that you would see in heavy metal. Um, because on one side, it seems like this is like us, you know, like us, them really pushing into an area where you know you can have these like muscular tan barbarians wearing little loincloths and women wearing you know even less and then you go into rob liefeld's and because of the writing because of the execution and because of the non-development of characters in there they even seem worse the men are badly written enough and are caricatures of themselves they, they literally could be played by the barbarian brothers from the 80s and th that's who i that's the sort of mentality i see all of those different characters that he's ever had his hand in in, in creating but with the women it's like it doesn't even get that far they're always standing on point they've got there there's just things that don't make sense about it and i would i would definitely argue and say okay there's there's a point where you can say, okay, from a stylistic choice, you could say, hey, this is what these women look like, and this is how I like to draw them or render them or whatever. Sure. Um, but at the same time, I don't know. There's just something about about it now that as I'm older, it's more cringeworthy. It's just more uncomfortable to look at. And it just, I don't know. I, I just, I don't enjoy it as much as I used to. I I, I think back then I was so overblown by like, oh my God, look at all the computer coloring and look at the amazing, like, you know, line work and how does this work? And I, I really didn't know much about, I, I did not know much about comics back at that time. I knew some, but not enough to really do much with, I, you know, like I, I always wanted to draw one and I was trying and I looked up the few things I could find, you know, in, in, in wizard magazine and that sort of thing and, and and found what I could from there but it was interesting that you know even back then I remember trying to draw that way and personally and this isn't you know this isn't trying to be some you know politically correct person now about it but I, I remember back then like I used to have this series called uh, the Demonist Girls and so it was just or the Ram Headed Girls I kind of went back and forth depending on on where I was showing or what I was doing because you know the term Demonist really isn't the nicest but it was essentially um different women with just ram horns on their head in different ways and they weren't some of them were a little over sexualized but they were they were pretty tame by most standards and but i remember even then like there was a point where i kind of dropped that i didn't i didn't really draw that stuff anymore because i thought oh man you know like this isn't this really isn't cool or maybe this isn't something that 
I should be drawing, you know, like, I don't know. I think I kind of guilt tripped myself into a lot of that stuff, right? Like, I didn't really know if I was going to, uh, going, going to keep drawing that way, but, um, I think I had it in my head that I was like, well, you know, if I, if I want to, if I want to be somebody, you know, really good at this stuff, I'm, I'm going to draw something that's more serious or something. I don't know. I, I just had a really, Rob Liefeld definitely was a reason that I, I had second thoughts about what I was drawing back then and, and how I was rendering women and, and all that other stuff. And I, so I guess in a weird begrudging way, I can say that every single time I see a pouch or something like that, and he, you know, then I, I think, I think about Rob Liefeld and I think about, you know, all the stuff that I don't draw now and all the things that I've stopped myself from doing because, because of that, I don't know if that's a right thing. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I mean, it's not like he was necessarily, you know, you know I mean, he didn't kill anyone per se, you know, so I, I guess I shouldn't be so harsh and judgmental against him, but I don't know. I know that, you know, it, I, and I can, I also can't help but look at it from the perspective of what, of what a lot of women in art must be thinking, you know, like, they're like, they probably think, well, I don't really want to go talk to this guy that draws women like this because I'm already a walking uh, issue for him because I don't, I don't look like, I don't act like, I don't constrain to what the ideology of a woman looks like to this person not just rob liefeld a lot of different guys that were big you know an image in comics in general really and you know that that sort of thing has been pervasive for a long time i mean you can take two different things made by one company mattel right barbie has always had an unrealistic aesthetic for women i've i always wondered that growing up you know like because I'd see, like, my sister owned a ton of them, and the Corvette, and the, the 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 freaking bus that she owned. I think her sister's name was Skipper or something like that. I mean, that's how much I remember her playing with these things. And um, and just, you know, like, I remember looking at, at Barbie and thinking that is, you know, she's, like, her feet were always down on point. And it made me think, like, later, like, did Rob Liefeld grow up around a lot of Barbie dolls? Not like there's a big deal or a big issue with that, but like, did he, is that just where he saw this? Because like, if you look at the anatomy, if you actually try to draw Barbie anatomically, it doesn't work. I mean, like the hands are these little weird things. I mean, watch Toy Story. Like she just like purposefully can't really move that well. And I can't believe I just did that on camera. And um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I don't have a name for this guy. I really don't know what I'm going to call him, but he very much has an imagination station sort of look to him, doesn't he? I want to call him Ralph, but now nah, anymore the name Ralph goes right back to Wreck-It Ralph. This is very much a little, this is a little this is a little bit of fun for me. This was this was nice. This helped break up some monotony for me, and uh, gave me something to play with tonight. Uh, this is really cool. I'm probably gonna save this and then go back in and ink. I think I really am gonna try and see how far I can push this one. Um, this one really came out much better than I thought it was going to. Thank you for watching, and I will be back with the inking part of this and probably even the coloring. I'm going to see how far I can take the coloring and maybe do some cool vector. Yeah, I think I'm going to actually do some some vector coloring in this one and uh, see how far I push this one because this is I really like this one. This this came together pretty cool. Nice little simple sci-fi almost a dragon dinosaur. I guess it could be a dragon because it's not really a dinosaur. I mean, it's kind of T-Rexy, right? Kind of. I don't know. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we'll catch you in the next video. I am Mario, the artist and rogue. You can find all the links you need down below. If you'd like to follow me, you can certainly follow me on Twitter. And if you liked what you saw, you know what to do. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I guess we're not really not supposed to say that sort of stuff in videos anymore because that kind of like, I don't know how they're finding that out. Like if you tell people to, you know, or I don't even know what the hell that was. Why was I doing that? I guess I could say that. click like and subscribe. But now that I've said that, it's probably going to tank. Anybody watching this thing? So stupid. All right, thanks, guys. See you in the next video.
incredible, incre incredible, incredible, incredible. I swear there's nothing in this drink. <laughs> and um, sorry if I'm making anyone thirsty because this is good. And <laughs> so stupid. Every time I say something, I'm like, that's going to sound cool later. And I'm like, why did I say that?